Couch with Fouch. For this episode of the show, we have Andrew Greer. Andrew, thanks for joining yeah, me, Yeah, thanks for having me. I feel so honored to be, it's, you know, called On the Couch with Fouch. I feel like I'm in a counseling session. You know what I mean? My <laughs> dad was a therapist, so. <laughs> okay, so I had a guy one time that we started it out. Where I had a chair sitting right here, and he was laying on the couch. So, yeah, yeah. Back, and we Telling were just all the secrets. Talking about all his troubles and all his problems. Well, my cat, you know, we're in Gallatin, Tennessee, just outside Nashville, and my counselor used to be just down the road. So I am thinking about feeling a little, a little <laughs> bit like here. So what would you like to share with me today? Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for watching this show. And I'm thrilled to be talking with you today, man. You do mm -hmm. a lot of similar things to this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but a lot of times you're the guy that's asking the questions, yeah. not the guy that's taking them. Yeah, that's getting so grilled. you're doing dinner conversations with Mark Lowry. Right. If you guys haven't saw that yet, you need to check it out. You do, I think it's called Features on Film. That's correct. For, for CCM, CCM Magazine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what, I, I know you're a musical artist too, so yeah. is there anything you don't do? Well, sure, there's a lot of things I don't do. Basketball being one of them. I don't know if you see how tall I am. But, uh, you know, music was the, has always been the heartbeat of what I love. I grew up in a musical family. I grew up playing the piano. That's why I was I and that guy over there and, uh, and went to college at Belmont University is how I got to Nashville, Tennessee, how I got here. And that was through a music degree. So songwriting and a lot of people don't even know that I write a lot, a lot for Christian artists and, wow. um, a lot of my start came, um, in the CCM Christian music world. But over time, it was actually people in those worlds that began to notice how much I loved words. Words turned into writing, which turned into journalism, which turned into writing for publications like Christianity Today. And then it turned into a first book or two. And then I met Mark through actually Bring It Up to Speed, the CCM Magazine Features on Film Series. We do it much like this. It's on camera. And we're kind of with their cover artists talk, trying to get deeper than the surface about yeah. just what matters in life and what's meaningful to them. And Mark happened to be pitched as a possibility when his uh, couple of DVDs go. So we hit it off. Um, he called up and was like, what would you think about doing? We love podcasts. Uh, you know, so of course, you. I love true crime podcasts. So I told him I'd have to murder him to actually have a podcast, but he, <laughs> <laughs> he's still alive. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Thank goodness. Yeah, defending. So we started dinner conversations as a way to also kind of sit down with people like you do and just let the conversation roll because of how important conversation can be mm -hmm. and finding more about one another, but I think as we discover more about one another, we discover more about God. So that's how Dinner Conversations was born, and we're about to hit the third season of that this fall on Amazon Prime. So we're kind of just, I, I don't know, wherever the wind takes me is what I feel like. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever feel like that because you have so many different interests as well. Yeah. And you can play basketball. <laughs> so <laughs> How did you know? I was watching something, and I was like, you know. Don't tell me you went on and did your background information on me for when I would be the one interviewing you. It's like, what am I going to be asked today? Yeah, you yeah. probably did it because that's what you're used to doing. I do love researching. I've always been a researcher to gotcha. some degree. So so I'm not like a wordsmith. Mm -hmm. I don't okay. really I don't really write. I don't, uh, I'm, I'm not writing for any magazine. Yeah, yeah. I just like to sit down and talk to people. And what was funny about On the Couch with Fouch is that couch rhymes with fouch <laughs> so it just it just happened you know i know you've got a whole lot more background on it than i do well i think sure maybe from a journalistic standpoint but conversation i i think is just we learn it in different ways some people didn't learn it some people didn't grow up at home mm -hmm. sitting around a table or really even having maybe their parents dialogue with them maybe they dialogue some with peers but i think it's our the adults in our lives when we're children who kind of mentor us. Like I remember coming home from church most Sundays and we would sit around the table and have dinner. I have two older brothers and my mom and my dad grew up in Texas, pretty rural, but we come all come home and may have not even seen each other that much that morning. My mother was an organist at church. My dad would teach a lot and we'd come home and my dad would say, you know, something he would ask like, what was the sermon about? Or what did you talk mm -hmm. about in Sunday school? And 
even when we're very, very young, we might kind of just regurgitate whatever we thought we heard or whatever. And he would ask, well, what do you think about that? Especially when it came wow. to the sermon. So he was already yeah. initiating conversation. He, he was asking us to think and to engage that we weren't just, he didn't see us as bionic, you know, like some kind of robots that just repeat whatever we're told. So I think we're in an interesting culture where we repeat a lot of what we're told and we're told through various sources based on our interests and leanings. But I always want to encourage people think about that. Okay. So let's say you like this news outlet or you like this Facebook feed or you like this author. Well, sure. It's great to engage with their material, but Think about, like, you have a brain, you know, and you have a really cool brain. Wow, you do. <laughs> I know. Don't ever forget it. You can I, think for yourself. Even Fouch. <laughs> and so, what? <laughs> How did that go negative towards me all of a sudden? No, no, negative. negative. <laughs> well, you got, even you, Fouch you got has kids, a brain. I mean, right? come on. I, I do have kids, yes. So I'm sure you're already, like, thinking about how to teach them to think. Yeah. Yeah. You know, for themselves in a yeah. culture that's inundated with messaging. So anyway, I mean, I think anybody, all that comes back to you and it, you don't have to be a writer to be a no. really great conversationalist. No, you don't even have to have a brain. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but Fouch does. I <laughs> oh, see. I thought you were saying even Fouch has a brain. I mean, really. Well, I was. <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of, you know, taking all that, okay. taking all that in and digesting it, what's a tip? or a piece mm. of advice that you could give somebody that's maybe younger that's watching that's like, I want to get into music sure. or I want to get into journaling or mm -hmm. interviewing people or mm -hmm. something in that type of a realm. What, 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 what type of advice would you give them? Well, you know, you know this personally. Uh, advice is difficult because it's so experiential. It's so based on some one person's experience. Yeah. And each person's experience is very unique, even when they look similar. But I, I think, I mean, willingness to work is always a wonderful oh, thing. Yeah. You know, I, I did not always, I did not always receive income for what I love to do. You know, and I think of myself 10, 12, or really like 15 years ago when I was in college and then right out of college as an early 20s. Uh, I didn't just suddenly end up in the career I wanted to be in. And honestly, I would not have even dreamed that some of the careers I'm in now would have even be, would, I wasn't thinking about them. Mm -hmm. So both willingness to work and willingness to be open because I think the path, like not to get too married to one dream. And I know that sounds, some people are really chasing after one specific thing. And I don't know that I wasn't either at some point in time, but I just think the world is wide open with mm -hmm. opportunity and with options. And then if you utilize your brain a little bit, my parents kind of always at least implied that you can do whatever you want to do. Use your brain to figure out how to make it work for you and your family financially. You know, yeah. um, sometimes I, a lot of the most successful people I, that we think of as successful have sacrificed a lot of generic things, maybe a certain size house and mortgage, uh, maybe living in a certain neighborhood or place, uh, whatever it is that perception can say is successful, to afford them the ability to do some very successful things in their craft. So I think all that, and then other than that, whether it's music or journalism or being in a corporate setting, you know, some people want to climb that corporate ladder and will be very effective in influencing the world through any given company. Uh, being open to people, to relationship building, and yeah. not just for the sake of networking, it is also okay to network with the people you trust, but just being open to people, I think provides like opportunities you wouldn't even think about, right. you know? Yeah. Well, two things I want to add, um, not add, but that stuck out to me, what mm -hmm. you were saying there. One was being open mm -hmm. because I never intended to sing bass. I mean, that's okay. Those of you well, that are watching, talk. <laughs> those of you that are watching that, that don't know. And I actually had a guy say this to me at a concert recently. He said, I've seen you on the couch with Fouch, but I didn't know you were a singer until a couple months ago. Isn't that cool? So, so he's been watching me uh -huh. do interviews, but he had no idea that I sang. So those of you that don't know, I sing with a group called Legacy Five. And I've been singing now for 15 years. And I never intended to sing. Hmm. I was studying accounting. Of all things, I was studying accounting in business hmm. college and um, was enjoying it. It's a little hard for me to wrap my mind around the mm -hmm. concepts. I had to study hard. And then I started singing. 
So then I changed my degree. I was working at a bank, Mm -hmm. you know, so I was doing all the things that was supposed to be this career path. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like way over here. How interesting. You know, and I have a business degree, but now I'm over here singing bass. I've been doing it for 15 years. So being open to saying, okay, God, whatever you want, whatever your path, your path is, I, mm. I kind of feel like it's this right now, but then God steps in and says, well, how about I open this door over here and not being so dead set on, this is what I have to do. Sure. And being open and saying, okay. Or you even, know, and you go over here. Yeah. Even that's happened to me more open than this is what people have to know me for. Like, I like that someone came up to you at one of your concerts which is probably how you still assume most people would know who you are Absolutely. just because you've been doing that for longer and, and it's a large platform. But then to see that someone actually, the entry point was here, yeah. which I, I mean, I can respond to that because people have so many different entry points. And if they're not following me on Facebook or they don't care, which most people do not care about anybody but themselves, <laughs> <They don't care. laughs> then, <laughs> then, you know, it, yeah. I think that's so cool that, it probably gave him uh, a kind of holistic, or maybe not holistic, but a unique picture into the concert that night, yeah. having heard some of your ideas and seen you with some of your guests. You yeah, I mean? I'm sure. Because yeah. I know they don't let you talk on the Legacy 5 stage. No, I don't I don't get to uh, say much. I might get a joke in every, like a punchline yeah, or yeah, something, yeah, but yeah. that's about it. Yeah, and Scott, only if it works. Right, yeah. <laughs> if, it, if it don't work, we scrap it. Yeah, do Scott's else. like, you're fired. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still around, so I haven't fired yet for that. Um, what's been your most memorable moment oh. of all these things that you're into? What would you say is the thing that sticks out? Hmm. Goodness, you know, that's a. it's only hard because each new opportunity provides its own coolness, you know, if you will. But, you know, there's a couple things where I remember walking away and being like, what I try to filter it through is when I was 10, 11, 12, 13, what I thought of, like, if I was still 10, 11, 12, 13, I would just wet my pants thinking, you know, like, this is happening, you know? Yeah. And I, I'm sitting down with... Yeah, whoever. You know, yeah. whoever it is. Gosh, you know, okay, so I, I remember one, and sometimes it's through the lens of my parents who've always been some of my biggest supporters, but really just my closest friends. So they know me and they know I, they can really observe what I love and what's interesting to me. But I remember we couldn't get cable where we lived in Texas growing up. It was too far out. You remember back in our day growing up, like if you didn't put a satellite up to the aliens, yeah. you couldn't see anything. But Dial up. The few channels. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Internet. Like we would be banging our head against the glass. <laughs> it takes right you a now. minute and a half <laughs> just to get the service. You see it just load. <laughs> I think this is what I was looking for. Yeah. So anyway, um, I used to have a a friend or one of my parents' friends at church who had cable. She lived in the city, which was like a 5,000 people town. And uh, she would tape the Devil Awards every year. I grew up loving all kinds of music. My parents were not really into Christian music, though my dad was a big cathedrals fan. So we didn't even listen to Southern Gospel, but he loved the cathedrals. Isn't that interesting? Very interesting. Yeah. Uh, None of the rest of it. Okay, pause. Yeah. What was it about the cathedrals? That Was it the jokes he it? loved the concerts. Like, okay. uh, or that's what I would perceive. He also loves harmony. He loves music. He loves quartets. And he grew up in the, you know, he was a kid in the 50s and grown up teen in the 60s. So he, I, I should ask him sometime. He must have been influenced in Louisiana and there with must, quartets. He didn't follow Southern Gospel music much, you know, but the cath- there must have been something about the cathedral quartet well, that he gravitated towards. What I learned yeah. too as I was growing up and listening to them because he listened to them is that the cathedrals kind of superseded even Southern gospel, maybe because their legacy was even before that was a defined Mm. genre. And then they became kind of the premium legacy group of that. Of course, obviously a legacy that still continues. Uh, But I remember going to their farewell tour, which of course Scott would have been on that. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was still in high school and they were coming to Fort Worth and I was like, dad, don't you want to go? And he's like, yeah, like he, he didn't go concerts all the time or whatever. And he was like, yeah, let's do it. And I had never seen him in concert, but there's showmanship. And I say that in the most purest way, like not in a, it's not a shtick. I mean, it is, and it's rehearsed, but the timing of both the comedic opportunities in that concert, as well as the, the, like the ebb and flow of the show, then to take you to, Oh, what a savior at the end. You know what I mean? It's the journey. It's phenomenal, you know? And that was before, uh, you know, 
didn't Glenn die in the middle of that farewell tour somewhere? Yeah. So that was before. Be, yeah, before it's done. Yeah. So anyway, all that to say, they listened to lots of music growing up. Um, we listened to Motown. We listened to Simon and Garfunkel, Peter Paul and Mary, and classical. My mom is an organist. But I loved Christian music too, very much. And so they would tape all the Dove Awards so I could, because that was like my really only connection to the mm-hmm. industry. And I remember when I was nominated for my first Dove Award, and this would have been maybe 10 years ago or something. And my mom was a music educator for the last 20 years of her career. And I texted my dad. I found out from someone else that was at the little press release thing or whatever. And I was like, are you serious? You know, I didn't expect it. And so I found out that it was true. I confirmed it first. And I texted my dad. I was like, check this out. And I had this little screenshot of the nominations. And he called Mama Mealy. And my mother is really cool and really sweet, uh, but not that emotional. She raised boys. You know, she can yeah. handle life. And apparently she cried in her school room. Oh. Anyway, I, I, just because she was like, and she said, you have to go. I can't go. You have to go to my dad. And I wasn't going to even go to the ceremony. And he was like, are you kidding me? So to go in then and to, to know the people backstage and to like to have dad there put a new filter on. You know, we forget sometimes that the things that we saw growing up, that now we're a part of them and we forget to recognize that and really mm-hmm. let that soak in or go home and be like, that's kind of cool. I, I remember, you know, my very first concert as a kid was Sandy Patty, which I'm sure many people in our era who went to church was either yeah. that or Amy Grant or something. And she invited all the kids on stage. And we went, so I was like eight or nine, went up on stage. And my dad had said, do you want me to bring my camera to the concert? And I was like, no, I mean, they're not going to be able to let you take pictures. Of course, people were all down front taking pictures. And then I got to go up on stage, right? And she came up to me with the mic and stuff. And he was like, I should have brought my camera, should yeah. I? But when I got should've to... listen to you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Kid. Which he never did. I don't know what that was about. Well, he did. But... um when I got to sing a duet with her in, in the studio for a project, you know, that was it. full circle moments are what I remember as being kind of cool just because it reminds you. My counselor one time said, don't forget, like, whether it's generic, like it's in the new year time or any time, sit down. Like, you don't truly experience life if you don't both anticipate things that you know are coming up, experience them, so live them and then reflect back upon them. If you don't, so if you don't do all three, it doesn't really kind of seem in it in your mind and your heart. And so to really reflect, I don't think we're a reflective society. Take time, anybody, reflect on the things that you would have, that now at 35, you're like, that. when I was 12, that would have been cool. Yeah. Everyone's got those moments. Right. Maybe having a kid, it maybe whatever it is, you know. Right. What's the future look like for you, man? <laughs> I don't know. I'm I mean, getting older. I, I mean, I'm assuming... You're open to whatever comes yeah. along, like you said earlier. I mean, the future, you just really don't know. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know on any level. On a personal level, I'm single with no kids and uh, really love the union of marriage and the picture of that. Um, have had some really um, poignant dating experiences, both negative and positive, that have affected me in different ways and maybe my peers were affected by the end of some of those or the the experience of some of those. So, you know, I, I work to remain open in that area of my life. Relationships is something that I have very deep friendships and lots of families, lots of kids in my life that I get to be part of their lives. And that's really cool. So I'm very fulfilled by the relationships in my life, but I don't ever want to, I told my dad one time, I both want to be okay with whatever life puts in front of me, but I don't want to, I don't want to respond so much out of the pain of my life that I shut something down that would be really beautiful. But also be okay if that's not what my life looks like either, the both and. So personally, you know, like it's, it's harder, the fight to stay, it really is a struggle to stay open personally in a lot of ways. And I think that's probably true for most of us. Professionally, I don't know, when you think about personal stuff, then you think about professional, it's kind of back, it's like, who cares? You know, I mean... (laughs) People are what matter. And yeah. as long as my professional endeavors get to put me in touch with people and I get to hear new perspectives and ideas, and those aren't always my ideas and perspectives, that's really important to me. To Because if we are all created in the image of God, you know, how much might I learn about God if I learn something about someone else mm. that is not something I already had within. Yeah. And yeah, right. there's things that don't, 
look like God, I think, and we can be intuitive about that and things that look a lot like God, but I don't know in total. Do you know what God looks like <laughs> nah. in total? No. Nope. So, you know, you're a little picture. I'm hopefully a little picture. You know, everyone here today is a little picture and I don't know. So maybe just a shut up. Sometimes. You're a little picture. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're a little, little picture too. I wasn't yeah. telling him to shut up. <laughs> yeah, I was saying funny, I man. shut up sometimes and I can't. Hey, this interview is you're telling me to shut up. You tell me I have no brain. <laughs> I mean, what what's going on here? Yeah. Well, I had to drive a long way to be here today. <laughs> Dude, this is the part of the show I like to do. Okay. It's called Random Five. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask you just five whatever, totally random questions. Okay. And this gives those watching a little bit of insight into you a little more personally. And I'm sure you love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I do. <laughs> okay, here we go. What do you like to cook? Hands down, Southwest food. So, like, like Mexican, but Tex-Mex, you know, like pico de gallo, enchiladas, Anything with flour tortillas. Spicy. I will spicy. totally take spicy. I like fresh jalapenos diced up in things, but a lot of people don't. So yeah. I'm willing to do whatever, seed it, don't put it in there. Okay. I'm cool with it. Right yeah. on. Mm -hmm. All-time favorite vacation. Ooh, Australia. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was lucky to Didn't get to go. see that one coming. That was good. Yeah, and got to dive the barrier reef. That was, took a little boat out to dive with the Opera sharks. house? Oh, yes, actually, and I'm so glad you said that because the artist, there was an artist, my one of my favorite artists is Mavis Staples, like from the Staples Singers, and uh, you can't catch her on tour anywhere. We were in Australia. I thought, let's go to the Opera House. Doesn't matter what's playing, just because we were there a couple nights. Guess who's playing? Mm. Mavis Staples. Wow. I'm not kidding, in Australia. Yeah, so I felt like that was manna from heaven. Yeah, you know? that's awesome. Yeah, and then I almost died in the... Pacific Ocean, but was that I part really. of the barrier reef thing? The barrier reef thing, they were like, keep your left shoulder to the reef. If you go over, we can't find you. And they have had people go over. You would have to do some significant renegating to go over the reef. Wow. I mean, if you follow your guide, you're going to be fine. So I, I'm here. <laughs> Thank goodness. What talent do you wish that you had? Oh, so many. Uh, Basketball. <laughs> Actually, no. We talked about earlier. Basketball is one of the most boring sports to me. No, yeah, no. I know. I'm a major league baseball fan. We're gonna so. have to be total. I know. Which so isn't that, that funny? I'm a baseball fan. People like and me yeah. calling basketball the most. Yeah, boring. the one you sit there and like. Yeah, they like snooze. <laughs> oh man, you know, gosh, I guess I possess everything I ever wanted. Um, I have always loved African American culture, and I think this goes with that question. I've always loved the ability that I feel my good friends who are African-Americans, the way they have control over their body with dancing and with singing and with athleticism. So maybe I would redirect the question to what talent, maybe like, who would I be if I wasn't me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. So who would you want to be if Just, you weren't you? Kirk Franklin. <laughs> Okay, okay. You know what I mean? Dream job. Uh, I think nowadays, I think it would be uh, something similar to uh, the Today Show or something where there's yeah. serious journalism involved with a lot of guests and really lighthearted stuff. So something, I don't know the Today Show is a perfect example, but uh, that territory. Gotcha. Yeah, so. Favorite TV show as a kid? Oh, I, I loved uh, vintage TV. So it would it would go between three. I guess you can't say three, but Sunday afternoons when everyone else was napping in my house, I hated napping. So I Love Lucy was always on the reruns, and then that sent me into like vintage TV and loved all that. Okay. Uh, but then from my era, when I was really young, the Cosby Show is something we watched all together. And though I know that legacy is a tricky one now, that show is brilliant. And Frasier. I still think Frasier is the best show of all time. It is so smart and so, um, I mean, it's spunky. It's also like snarky. <laughs> I love snark. Well, there you go. So you got, uh, <laughs> and the, pretense. The Lucy pretense. show. Yeah. Uh huh. And Cosby. Cosby and uh -huh. Frasier. There you go. It's not three cool. Yeah. No, those are good ones. Yeah. It, I've enjoyed all three of those one? as well. No, no. You're good. <laughs> All right, guys, this is the fun part, I think. Oh, gosh. You have five I cards had all the fun sitting on your table. Okay. And what we're going to do... Oh, I'm not supposed to look at it. Well, you can look at the first one. Okay. What, we, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little word game. And 
there's one word, one name, one phrase on each card that you have. Mm -hmm. We're going to try to carry on a seamless, very casual conversation, but you have to insert the word or whatever is listed on your card into the sentence or into whatever word okay. somehow. Okay. And we're going to try to make this be a conversation. Cohesive. Okay. Who starts? So I'll let you start, but I'll start <laughs> off the conversation by saying, we've had some wonderful weather this summer, don't you think? I um, hate I hate kittens. <laughs> that has nothing to do with the weather. I said the word. <laughs> <laughs> kittens is the word, I guess. Okay. You go. It's your okay. show. <laughs> so, yes, we have had... I'll be more sneaky. You know, we'll see if you can do it. Uh, we have had some great weather. Mm -hmm. It's been a great... You want me to redo been, this? No, no, no. You're fine. <laughs> I'm sorry that you hate kittens. And I don't know. Is that something from your childhood that makes you... It wasn't really my childhood. I used to be a bodybuilder. So I worked out a lot in the gym. And they always had these random stray cats that would be out in the parking lot that you had to kind of dodge. Okay. Interesting. And that's why you hate kittens. See, it's one reason. It's and there's others. It's kind of like, um, you know, at, for me, it's like bananas. And I don't know what it is about bananas. They're just kind of weird. And at the end of the day, you know, there's always you go to the grocery store and it's like a banana rama. I mean, they're just like all <laughs> over the place. And I just like start getting freaked out. And you know, to me, it's it's banana. You have Fouch, I think there are much stranger things than bananas. Back to you. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, one strange thing is, again, at the grocery store, you go to the grocery store and you see somebody walking around and they're wearing just the most hideous polka dots outfit ever. And, and it's just, it's ridiculous. I mean, how many people really need to be wearing polka dots? Am I supposed to wait for you? For what? <laughs> Do I get to go whenever with my words? Am You're I supposed, supposed to, to win? Wait. You're oh, supposed to wait for me. Why in the world are I? I hate the this polka game. dots. Um, so the people polka, with polka dots. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and on. then you see them with the polka dots. It's always blinding. You end up stubbing your toe. Where do you go from there? <laughs> Another thing that I think. Don't change the subject. And when I well, well when I think of stubbing Speaking my toe, of the devil. When I when I think of stubbing my see, I've got three. I got to get in here. Oh my god. When gosh, I think of stubbing gosh. my see this, I'm gonna skip here to this the second one. <laughs> You can't pass. I'm going as slow as a sloth on this. So <laughs> I've got to get back to this one over here because you've got so many in so far. Uh -huh. But when I'm thinking about just pain, you're talking about stubbing your toe. I mean, that's got to be the absolute worst ever, stubbing your toe. Nothing is worse than a black cat. <laughs> what I was going to actually say was trigonometry for me was close to stubbing my toe. I hated trigonometry I'm done. I hate cats. Kittens is in here, and black but, cats but is in My here. last one is, but the last thing about school that— You're still going. I've got one, yes. The one thing about school that was maybe worse than trigonometry was, have, as a basketball player, was the cheerleaders. <laughs> that was the biggest struggle? <laughs> well, that was the, the, Don't look the that thing. Way. It was just like— Oh, cheerleaders again. Now they're out on the court again. Now they're back. Now they're, the pom-poms are everywhere. I never the, remember all the thinking, cheers. oh, shucks, the cheerleaders are out on the court. <laughs> but well, as the ball I guess player, for you wouldn't be out there. No, I wouldn't have. I was serenading. You know, I still remember when they asked me to sing. You this. absolutely blew through yours. Well, I thought that's what you're supposed to do. I thought this uh, was a game. It was supposed See, to be back Obviously, I don't watch late night TV enough. Guys, thank you so much for joining. <laughs> Andrew, thanks for being here, man. Yeah, it's been a blast. My pleasure. And I hope you can incorporate the word game into uh, uh, we have to on do film it. or something. Yeah. Well, I was thinking with Mark on dinner conversations, but, you know, his attention span. That is, would. But he may be able to. He may be really good at it since he's attention. I believe he's he going quick at one it. to the next yeah. one. I don't know if I want to submit myself to that. Where can these <laughs> folks catch up with features on film, dinner sure. conversation, all that? You can. My website's kind of an easy hub. So you can uh, andrew-greer.com or just Google Andrew Greer. That's probably easier than the dash. Or Google Dinner Conversations. I'd love, we just finished season two on Amazon Prime, which was cool. And season three is coming up this fall. So you can kind of binge it all and make it sick. Cool. <laughs> Guys, check them out. I know you'll absolutely love it. They get into some great depth on different issues on your features on film and with Dinner Conversations. Yeah, especially Dinner Conversations. So yep. it's great. Check it out. And again, thanks for watching On the Couch with Fouch. God bless you guys. We'll see you next time.